वॉट इफ द अद्वैत वेदांत इज रॉन्ग वॉट इफ ऑल दिस फिलोसफी इज ऑल्सो फॉल्स बिकॉज कमिंग फ्रॉम ह्यूमन माइंड इज पॉसिबल दैट देर इज सम एरर समवेयर न वाई इज दिस क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट देर इज लैक ऑफ स्टडी लैक ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस देयर एंड सेकेंड द माइंड स्टिल हैज सम एक्सपेक्टेशन प्रॉब्लम इज बिगर देन दैट probably it's not done this probably there is purpose probably it is going to be better somewhere and because the mind is brainwashed it is it has become religious mind there is hope there hope is the problem isn't it and that's why these ordinary things you don't like them because always hope for better always in future or past where things were nice and cool in present is a burden And that is the problem and when told that there is no such thing there is only this present moment which is absolutely perfect beautiful and blissful right now right here an ordinary mind or a seeker's mind also is not satisfied because very grand delusions are there in the mind so such questions happen what if advaita is wrong what is there is something better <laughs> what if the non duality is also illusion and there is something more beyond that is there any way to check whether it is right or wrong true or false in the concept of non duality or should we take the word of the guru on blind faith because there is no other way have you ever thought about this net teachings can be wrong it is human mind it's possible to make an error look at all those scientists you see the great scientists most of them were wrong this knowledge is very very old many thousand years old people were not so advanced that is what you are told therefore it can be wrong it sounds logical it is not but and we can have this kind of doubt so if somebody gets this kind of doubt what should we do there are two kinds of minds isn't it when whatever you tell them and many people are talking the same thing this mind will never doubt it will say yes obviously this old knowledge everybody is talking about it so many gurus are there they look perfectly honest it sounds logical and all and they accept it oh so there is non duality oh so it's oneness it's emptiness self i yes yes the consciousness is here i can see it so on and then they then then they don't even wonder i don't think people wonder about this or not but nothing really changes after this same life another layer of beliefs on top of so many beliefs and there is the other kind of people who will say no no no, no. this can no is not possible what i know is right not that which i am told these all gurus they are fake they just want money there is some religion of some kind from the eastern countries old old stuff superstition and no amount of logic or experience will convince them skeptical people and probably this question is coming from uh, the skeptical kind what if advaita is wrong because the believers they don't want to even <laughs> touch this question they, they become afraid as soon as you tell them look this belief that you are holding can be wrong and then they will avoid you forever because the ego is like this it does not want to uh, let go of belief where it has found security and this attachment to the belief is not knowledge and the second one probably there is anti belief there is a negative belief also is the same as positive belief no difference at all so that that should settle the question is it right or wrong and the answer is who cares do not believe do not believe that it is right do not believe that it is wrong this is the attitude of a seeker agnostic you say i don't know and i don't care this is the right attitude now you are not going to have this attitude big just because i said it just because it is recommended you will find initially yourself into these two camps one of these two a total believer a total disbeliever they are one and the same thing same ego egoic issue once you have done that kind of circus a lot 
then you will reach this attitude of not knowing. Not knowing is of greater value than knowing. Don't know. These are the golden words. What if it is wrong? Is that nothing is going to change? <laughs> if it is right, nothing is going to change. This is disappointing, isn't it? That's why I never say this. Look, don't try to know anything because nothing is going to change. This is not really logical way of imparting the knowledge. You will need to make up a story. That um, oh, these these are your questions. Okay, I have the answer. Here is your answer. Is it satisfying? Yes, yes, yes. And the person goes away very happy, and something changes for that person. If you get into a belief that look, it had an effect, it had good effect, changed my mind, changed my life, and so on, then you are in the camp number one believers. Now, no amount of argument will. Get rid of this belief that this is right, and if you found it totally useless, then you are in the. It does not answer your question, so you are in the camp number two. It is useless. Nothing has changed for you. So a seeker is not in both camps. Okay, here is my answer. Now, nothing. Is it useful? Okay, it's useful. So I'll I'll use it. Is it true? Now you will need to remain silent. How can we say that? What is true here? And those who have uh, listened to uh, my thoughts on uh, truth, they will recall that there is no such thing, true or false. There is no such thing as right or wrong. There is no such thing as absolute, non-absolute. It is unknowable. So the correct response is, I don't know. And uh, this this is where I arrived after. A long time of, you know, oscillating between yeah, probably it's BS, religious stuff, because so many religions it's like, crept out of this philosophy, and uh, almost all religions actually. This is called Sanatan Dharma. So and in future also many many will come out of this belief systems will come out of it. So there are many belief systems that are extinct now, and they came out of this only. There, there is nothing else to. Found your religion on non-duality is the only thing. So, after oscillating between these, okay, this man is very very smart. He has all the answers to my all all my question. Always comes up with the right answer, and, he, and now he is my guru. So he said non-duality is right. Okay, then it is right. I don't need to worry too much. My life is solved now. No more seeking. What is this? This is and again belief system settling into a belief. Now you will say, no, 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 I have the direct experience that this is non-duality. And again, I'll tell you something which I never say: do not trust your experience. <laughs> Now in Advait we have these only four means to gain knowledge. The first is direct experience, second is logic, the third is a guru, fourth is scripture or a book. Same as guru, isn't it? And the guru is talking from logic and direct experience, and the logic is based on direct experience. So everything boils down to your experience. And when you say, "It is my experience," this non-duality, this is fundamental. Now, uh, uh, there is very little room to move here. There is no place to go anywhere else because you have ex accepted the direct experience is a valid means of knowledge. Look at your direct experience for a moment. This is where probably there is a difference of opinion between uh, Advait and uh, Buddhism. Look at your direct experience. All your experience is fake. Look at it. But you can say no, no. That which is experiencing cannot be fake. Do you know what is experiencing? And the answer is no. I don't know. <laughs> and the paradox here is that if you know it. Through direct experience, it is not real. It is something separate from you. And if it is you, then you don't know it because it is you. You need a separation. You need a subject-object relation in order to know something. And therefore, the I cannot be known. The self cannot be known. The experiencer cannot be known. 
and your guru is telling you well there is no difference between experience and the experiencer they are one this is the definition of oneness the oneness does not mean that everything is you know one solid ball somewhere hanging somewhere it's, it's not oneness <laughs> and oneness means there is no subject object relation then who is the knower and who what is the known if there is no two it's not two and they were very very intelligent people isn't it when they said not two they did not say one because we cannot go beyond not two there is nothing to know beyond not two if you cannot know it you cannot say about it silence is the best answer or the next best is i say i don't know and people are going to object what do you mean this is gan mark this is path of knowledge and you're saying i don't know and, uh, and then the correct response is who cares is it required is the knowledge really necessary are the means of knowledge written in stone somewhere are the commands from above no so what advait is doing is not giving you anything solid to hold on don't ask right and wrong don't ask true and false from the beginning it says i don't know and in the end also it says i don't know and the end i don't know is a better position to be in because in beginning it is total ignorance probably presence of all kinds of beliefs the ignorance is nothing it's only believing something else so the path of knowledge will shed the ignorance in the end remains i don't know and that includes the answer to the question whether advait is right or wrong if you say right there's a big problem here <laughs> you are in camp number 1 you are a blind believer because you don't know what advait is then if you don't know what it is you cannot make a statement about it being right or wrong it's probably it's difficult for you guys but i think you are here since one year or so so and the last Uh, what you call the straw on which you are hanging must be taken away there is no right and there is no wrong there is a, a no uh, error and there is no correctness in advait if it is your experience that it is right then probably something big is wrong probably something some delusion is there, still there very very fine delusion is there remaining delusion Uh, now i am a gani i know everything and this is the right thing to know and this is sign of delusion so some people will say this is a true advait not knowing no it's not true advait it's not true at all and it's not false also so when i say look this is true isn't it in your experience this is true your experience is truth and the this is half truth actually this is not true do not trust your experience it is true in some relative way it is true and it is useful as long as it, it is destroying your belief of some kind and belief is destroyed well this job is done the job of the experience is done now you let go of it and do not make it turn it into a belief of some kind because i am guaranteeing you that uh, there will be some other experience which will prove it wrong completely wrong so after oscillating uh, like this i came to this conclusion yes it is a gay that means no statements can be made so uh, now you can see all the philosophies all the traditions religions and they mean nothing and they are not right they are not wrong they are meaningless purposeless everything you do is has no meaning and this is the essence you cannot put a purpose you cannot put a right and wrong stamp on this existence whatever it is so the zen master will say that those who know they don't know those who don't know they know not only zen other traditions also will say something like this like hermetics and probably the advait itself will say something like this and the problem is people know half or maybe 90% and they assume oh yes the amazing thing this is what i like and they don't get the essence cannot be bound in right and wrong because as long as long as there is something which is true there will be something which is false and then uh, you will encounter suffering uh, look somebody somebody has said something false look i i assume this thing in which which is false 
now for you for ordinary people this is not much <laughs> but for a, for a seeker this is absolute pain isn't it i was believing in something which was wrong it's painful to think about like this and then what should i do and then should i not know anything because in the end i am not going to know anything no that is against stupidity you will need to break down everything that you know and should i not do the effort of knowing and there are these uh, you know practices that are there of listening and meditating and introspecting seeing through the direct experience if they are absolutely necessary to arrive at the uh, point of not knowing if you don't do that all that which is recommended then uh, there is no possibility then the first i don't know will remain it won't grow to this complete vast enlightened i don't know there is no possibility to come from that first i don't know is dark tiny minuscule i don't know there is nothing beyond that and this one this not knowing is infinite bright empty in that i don't know there is a lot to know lot remains to know in this i don't know nothing remains to know nothing can be known that uh, i don't know is coming from the mind the mind is saying i don't know and this i don't know is coming from you the atman it is asserting i am nothing to be known <laughs> look at this this is what i am nothing to be known here so those who have this doubt i think it will be solved by now <laughs> i did not answer as usual i destroyed the question but uh, what i recommend is before breakfast every morning destroy all the knowledge that you have destroy all the advait that you have heard every morning before breakfast and by the time you finish the breakfast the whole advait will be back in place it cannot go away and when you destroy the knowledge what are you left with i don't know and when you assemble it back through your direct experience and logic you should be left with i don't know if you are left with right and wrong and this and that and oneness and twoness well that your breakfast time is wasted better enjoy the breakfast so i do this many times <laughs> you will say what is the what is the need well the need is to destroy this question see what you get see what you get through your direct experience and logic also if you don't get the silence in the end something is wrong so people will say this is too much i i took 10 years to understand all the vedas and all the upanishad the all the great masters thousand hours of videos and all satsangs you are telling me to <laughs> destroy it disbelieve it totally and here the mind has taken a hold you see the mind has made a house in this knowledge it has become a believer of knowledge knowledge is not to be believed is to be known and that which can be known in an instant which is what this is can be destroyed in an instant it does not take time how did you manage to take 10 years to know this much this tiny thing is not to i know there is a reason there this is a long story of the mind it takes some time to, it takes time only because of this issues of true and false and this and that because the pointing is very very quick because it is instantaneously acquired it can be in a second you can get it of it get it of all knowledge before just before starting the breakfast and then look at the experience again look at the experience again look at the oneness again look at the maya again look at the mind the empty nature of it again and it it should take less than 10 minutes it is all re- reassembled it is by necessity actually <laughs> that's why it is called sanatan it does not go away it appears in many many forms and languages and traditions is it right no is it totally wrong and no is it, is it an illusion no it is unknowable so in the end you will say well this is it and i really don't know <laughs> what it is <laughs> and then the life is ordinary you see as soon as you say i know something big well the expectation will come now i need change this and that here and there and and, and that will bring suffering 
the suffering is a sign that you have your mind has made a house somewhere on the bridge which is burning <laughs> so like this don't build your house on a bridge and the advait is a bridge to not knowing don't stay there and that's why i say in our satsangs we don't dwell on advait at all it is, we go beyond this and i don't think many people understand this thing but you see in, in the description it is written the path of knowledge and the okal path and the astral projection and the mind and the and the laws of the mind and consciousness the scientific study of it is all bs isn't it so advait is a bridge to go beyond dwait that's all that's all it is in the advait it's not two is nothing to know and anyway, this is my experience my interpretation you will need to get your own advait by that i mean just kick it out you will be surprised to see that it comes back no matter what that is how strong this is that, that is why it has survived you know so many eons so many cycles of the time we know it is beyond human mind but that is what we get again and again and you don't need years and years to destroy and build it up in my experience it takes 10 minutes you can do it right now also <laughs> if you want and destroy it completely you see i don't know this is all made up stuff and let's start again from the scratch look at your experience again is there an experience yes can you say no experience no 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 i cannot say this is there an experiencer yes can you say nobody is experiencing no no i cannot say this no matter how hard i try now look is there a difference is there a separation between the experience and the experiencer and when you look you will find mind well, look at this there is a mind here <laughs> you see everything falls into same advait which you kicked out now you can you can come up with many many assumptions look at this this is matter and then that means the mind has taken another route now it is going to be, get lost in the matter forever that's why we say maya as soon as the mind assumes something is gone it's lost there is no hope of coming back from there and you say look this is a jeev there are heavens and there there is evolution of the mind and so on and then it has taken another path it will be lost there forever in the many 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 layers of the universal mind the infinite why it is infinite is it it cooks up something as soon as it wants there is no end to that you have gone there you are lost there now if these assumptions are absent and you have taken the path of the four valid means of knowledge that four valid means that i just described you will arrive at advait if you take something else you will be deluded the imagination will take you into many many delusions that look rock solid and true this is the characteristic of maya that it looks true that that's why advait is a kind of purification of this delusion but never assume that it is right never assume that this is true <laughs> that is another delusion so everybody should do this kind of exercise and then the ordinary becomes extraordinary the ordinary is spiritual there is no expectation now nothing needs to be done